Hello everyone and welcome back to Age Nagash, which is a channel dedicated to Age Sigma. And in this video, this is going to be the second part of my Nighthorn army video, and this is going to be the one where we're talking about the heroes of the Nighthorn. So, I've already talked about in the part one um, what makes the Nighthorn army unique and some of their key aspects to the army. So in this video, like I said, I'm going to be looking at the heroes of the Night Haunt. And we're going to start with the more basic ones, just to, you know, build up something a little bit more exciting at the end, being, you know, the uh, some of the bigger heroes we've got in the army. And the first one we're going to start with is going to be the humble Calm Wraith. So starting with the law for the Calm Wraith, essentially what they were in life were um, either executioners or they were um, murderers, essentially they were a soul who enjoyed murdering and butchering as many people as possible, either through work like the executioner or through, um, like I said, through more sort of evil criminal means like, you know, mass murderers and serial killers and things like that. So where these guys are quite interesting, they're a little bit different from the units we've looked at previously with the Nighthorn, is that they weren't, you know, um, your good guys or anything like that, they weren't healers. I didn't try and stop anyone from dying and all that and then Nagash was angry and he punished them to make them the complete opposite of that in death. These guys already enjoyed killing, they already enjoyed taking the life away from immortals and so on. So these guys already had the sort of hatred for the living there while they were already a living so that was um, quite interesting. Nagash didn't really twist them, Nagash is sort of up the ante on them a little bit, just made them a little bit more ferocious and a little bit more, you know, um, stripped whatever humanity they had left on them essentially so looking at their stats they've got a six inch movement they've got a four plus save they've got ten bravery and they've got four wounds so six inch movement uh yes yeah, six inch movement is really good um you know it's quite standard for a lot of the units in this army but bear in mind these guys can fly as well of course um six inch movement on a calm wraith is good four plus savory yeah good and standard we've seen in this army ten plus bravery um, doesn't feel like it's going to come into it much being a hero, you know, because you're not doing battleship tests. However, as you know, there are abilities that target enemies depending on their bravery. You know, it could be um, for debuffs or it could be for, you know, actually dealing damage to the enemy. Like the uh, Tomb Banshee is a perfect example. So it's good that he's got a high bravery and like we say, that is expected of death. But I thought I'd just talk through a little bit there. And then four wounds. Yeah, not a lot of wounds, but this is only a little hero for your army, so I'm okay with that. Right, so then looking at these weapons, he's only got one and it's a melee weapon, so it's got a 2 inch range, it's got 3 attacks, it's a 4 to hit, 3 to wound, minus 1 rend, 2 damage. So like I said, for a little hero, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this, I think that's pretty good. Because this guy is only going to cost you 60 points, like I say, he's a little hero, so I'm more than happy with those stats, in all fairness. So going on to his abilities, he's ethereal, I've already talked about why that's really good in my um, part 1 of the army video, if you haven't already seen that. Uh, I suggest you guys uh, watch that because I talk about the Night Horn as an army quite a bit more in that one. Um, but essentially the ethereal means that ignore uh, modifiers, positive and negatives, by making save rolls for attacks that target this model. Um, bear in mind though, if you put a Mystic Shield in this guy, if you really want to, he's getting a um, 4 plus save, which is you can't rend against. Um, but he's re-rolling one to save. So, you know, it's pretty goddamn durable if you really want to make him like that. Just bear in mind the ethereal rule would mean that if he was in a scenery piece he would not um, get the benefit from cover as his uh, actual save cannot be modified in the sense of it can't go up and down. So that's just something to bear in mind there. And then going on to his next ability, um, he's got the frightful touch. So if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a reaper's scythe is a 6, that attack inflicts 2 mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. Do not make a wound or save roll. So what that means is if you get a 6, it has two more wounds instead of norm damage. Um, that's really nice. I have used this guy in um, tournaments. How I used to run him, uh, I used to run him in just a Legion of the Gash army in a Grand Host in the Gash back in uh, first edition, I suppose you would call it, of Age of Sigma. You know, before the um, new core rulebook in second edition, pre was basically. Why I ran him in my Legion of the Gash army is because I gave him, I think it's called the Balefire Lantern, which basically made enemy units within six inches of him, minus one to. Um, wound and I think minus one two casting as well or something like that 
Um, but I got him for the minus one to wound because I stuck this guy next to the gash and it just made him a pain in the ass for the enemy to deal with because the enemy didn't really want to target him for attack, you know, just want to target Nagash. But if you're in combat with Nagash and this guy's next to you within six inches, so basically if you're attacking Nagash, any part of his model, um, you're going to be minus one to wound, which back then was pretty big and still quite big now. And it's just such a nuisance. And that's really why I like the car race because he's only got four wounds. He's only costing you 60 points. He's a really cheap little hero for your army. However, he can be a pain for the enemy to deal with because like I said, the enemy doesn't really want to deal with him. But if the enemy doesn't deal with him and you get him into combat with the enemy, the enemy's not really putting any attacks on him and they're not planning on killing him. He's still got three attacks that, you know, have the potential to do, you know, well, six damage or six more wins and that's pretty, you know, like, if you're lucky of course. However, um, in my tournament, I think like, because I ran him in uh, two tournaments with that similar list, and the Calm Wraith was, I think in those two tournaments, or ten games, I think the Calm Wraith probably made somewhere about 20-something mortal wounds. I know that's ten games, there's a lot of games, but, you know, that's not that's not a bad ratio. There's some games where he made, um, I think there was one time when he I rolled my um, three attacks and I got three sixes, which again is, of course, incredibly lucky. But um, there's even there's quite a lot of times when I'd roll my um, three attacks and I'd get two sixes, and that's four mortal wounds right off the bat. And then if you're attacking, you know, a basic enemy unit, um, they haven't got a really good save minus one, they might not get a save into that at all. And then two damage, so six damage from this guy happened quite a bit, to be fair, especially when you um, set him against certain enemy units. So I um, really, really like that Frightful Touch ability they gave to the Calm Wraith. And that Frightful Touch is something they gave to the Calm Wraith, the Tomb Banshee, the Spirit Host, and the Hex Race. Um, and maybe the Black Coach as well with his scythe when the Night Haunt got updated basically in the Legions of the Gash so it was nice they all got that sort of upgrade there so um, and with that yeah the Spirit Host had it before the Frightful Touch but it was nice that the other units got it as well so that is the Frightful Touch going on to his last ability Reap Like Corn you can reroll failed hit rolls for attacks made with a Reaper Scythe if the target unit has five or more models. So this is the same ability we've seen with the Grimgast Reapers, which makes them so good. And again, it makes it good with the uh, Calm Wraith, because like I said, you want to get those sixes to hit. So if you're getting um, reroll failed hit rolls against units of five or more, and like I said, if you send this guy against um, enemy units that aren't you know, too great, you know, like their Horde units and their Battle Line essentially, um, he's going to be getting those re-rolls to hit because there's going to be more than five in the unit more than likely and if that's the case they're not going to be doing well against Ren so you're getting more damage through that way you're getting more sixes to hit you know standardly and um, yeah that's why I think it's really good because it's an unmodified hit roll of a six as well so if the enemy's making you minus one to hit which is quite easy to do these days uh, most armies have access to it uh, to be fair you know pretty much every army has access to make the enemy minus one to hit now through spells and so on so um, being an unmodified hit roll of a six is great the enemy's not going to be able to take away from that essentially unless I believe you're going against demon nets or some sort of Sinesh unit where it can make you re-roll your sixes or treat your sixes as one something like that but then you'd be re-rolling them anyway because of reap blood corn so it's pretty hard for the enemy to try and neuter this essentially so yes I do like that and then looking at the keywords so he's got Death, Malignant, Night Haunt, Hero and Calm Wraith. So obviously the two important ones here are Night Haunt and Hero. Um, Hero, you know, to get your um, basically your death save from this guy if you're in range of it. And uh, Night Haunt, you know, obviously for synergies and stuff and everything in it is going to be Night Haunt anyway. Um, no Sunball keyword, but we're on to the heroes now, so we're not going to see that. So fair enough there. So yeah, that's the Calm Wraith for 60 points. Um, can't say a bad word against him. He's only got four wounds, but... Again, I'm going to repeat myself, 60 points here, I'm not going to complain at all. I mean, even, I'm surprised his attacks aren't, you know, three attacks, uh, four to hit, three to win, minus one end, and one damage, and then you're doing the mortals on the um, six to hit. I think that would, that could be, you know, like a realistic change I thought they were going to make when the Legions and the Gasher Battle Tome came out. However, they didn't, and um, like I said, they made it better. So, um, really happy with that, and yeah, can't say a bad word about the Calm Wraith. It certainly served me faithfully in the past right so moving on to the other older hero we've got the tomb banshee so i say the older hero but again as i've mentioned the calm wraith older doesn't mean worse the calm wraith still doing amazingly and um so will the tomb banshee with her special abilities 
Right, so firstly, where is the Tomb Banshee in the lore? What essentially are they? And this is a game where it's quite interesting and in comparison to the Calm Wraith is that Tomb Banshees weren't always um, evil or bitter in life or anything like that or, you know, anything that you would think of a traditional Banshee. However, what they were is they could have been, you know, good folk. Um, they, you know, weren't necessarily evil, like I said. Could have been good people. However, they were robbed of their life in such a cruel and, you know, in such a cold-blooded way that this has um, haunted them, essentially, in their soul. You know, this betrayal, the traitorous act that someone, I don't know, close to them did to them and, you know, betrayed them and killed them. And this has made them dwell on it for so long that they became um, such a bitter and twisted and evil spirit, which, and when I say evil, I don't, that's the thing, they're portrayed as being evil, but, you know, they're just dwelling on the uh, acts of, you know, cruelty and, you know, betrayal, like I've mentioned, done to them, that this has really made them um, nasty and made them hatred for the living, and in particular the people who have wronged them, so Tomb Banshees, they're often um, can't move on from the places where they were murdered, or where they have this such a strong emotional attachment to, so that's where they're often found, so um, like I say, scenes of their death, also, you know, typical things like graveyards and, um, you know, cities and towns and obviously in the realm of death and Shaiish, this is obviously going to be amplified more across the realm. Um, so that's really where they are. So they were, you know, good people. They were just a subject of an act of betrayal. And because of that, they haven't been able to let go of life and they really want to seek their revenge on the people who betray them. And unfortunately, you know, over time, that really just sort of keeps building up to the point where they just want to release their you know bitterness upon every living soul there is so that's where they are in the law and then going on to their stats they've got a six inch movement a four plus save a ten bravery and four wounds so exactly the same as we saw for the calm wave so yeah pretty good overall i've already talked about why that is pretty good and again like i say six inch movement timed with flying yeah it's nice it means that the calm wave can you know get about and jump over some enemy units if they need to and then going into their melee weapons which is their only weapon but they do have an ability we'll get to later on which will do damage so like i say going on to their melee weapon we have got one it's a chill dagger it's got a one inch range it's got one attack it's a four to hit it's a three to wound minus two rend d3 damage feels just like a wizard staff sort of attack but it's got that minus two rend which might not seem like much but it is a big difference so this um uh, hero, like I say, this hero is only going to cost you 80 points, so 20 points are more than the Calm Wraith, but by no means a big hero at all. It's only a little hero, you know, you can tell that by the four wounds it's got, so do not expect to be chucking this um, hero into combat to do a lot of damage. However, if she gets forced into combat and um, she hasn't been killed yet, she, you know, she's got a chance of doing a few wounds to the enemy. Okay, so then moving on to its ability, so it can fly, it's ethereal. Um, a frightful touch so if the unmodified hit roll for an attack made with a chill dagger is a six that attack inflicts a d3 mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends do not make a wound or save roll so the same thing we saw for the calm wave so if you get a six to hit instead of um you know your attack doing its normal damage and you're going to roll to wound and so on it's just going to do d3 mortal wounds instead so that's really nice there um like i say if you She's not really designed for combat, but if she gets forced into combat, she's got a chance of doing a D3 mortal wounds to the enemy, which is never something to uh, sniff at. So yeah, that's pretty good there if you get lucky. Right, then moving on to the ability of why you would take the Tomb Banshee, and this of course is going to be its ghostly howl. So, at the start of your shooting phase, pick an enemy unit within 10 inches of the model and roll 2d6. If the roll is higher than the unit's bravery characteristic, it suffers a number of mortal wounds equal to the difference between the bravery characteristic and the roll. So this is why you take the Tomb Banshee, because this shooting attack is really, really quite good. It's only a 10 inch range, however with death you are pretty restricted with shooting attacks, to be fair. You know, it's a better range than the Zombie Dragons one, so can't complain too much, I suppose, being deaf. And it's pretty good, you know, essentially for a screen, you know, you can't really complain there for um, why it's quite short. But the nice thing about this is, depending again what sort of army you're fighting, if you're fighting against another deaf army, which is more likely these days than it used to be, as deaf has obviously got more popular with, you know, of course, you know, the Nighthorn Battle Time coming out, the Legion of the Gash, and particularly now Legion of the Gash are doing very well at the moment, especially in tournaments. But if you fight against, you know, your lower bravery armies, you know, like most destruction armies, um, quite a lot of chaos armies um, 
and um, quite a few order arms and yeah to be fair there's a few armies out there that even if they're bravery like sort of six and stuff you've still got a good chance of doing um quite a lot of damage to them if you're lucky with your dice um so yes that's why i really like this um ghostly howl i've had it in the past where i've done you know if the enemy's got i don't know bravery six i've got you know two sixes for this um, ability i've rolled my 2d6 and got two sixes again obviously that's lucky but when it pays off and it will pay off you know you might be unlucky with it but you will get your luck at some point um just doing a flat six mortal wins to the enemy from a hero that cost me 80 points is fantastic and remember with the night horn um with their battle trait ability aura of dread uh, making the enemy minus one to their bravery is um you know obviously going to help with this ability again you have to get quite close to the enemy to make the minus one bravery However, you know, the range isn't too bad on that ability. You know, you're talking about six inches, so if you're gonna have a other one of your units in combat with the enemy and you wanna chuck in some shooting there, you know, just to support them, the Tomb Banshee can do that beautifully. Of course, it's a swinging attack. Of course, you can roll double ones or double twos or one and a two, and I've done this countless of times with her before, but you do get lucky at some point, and when you do, it is beautiful. So yes, I'm a big fan of the Tomb Banshee. She's definitely given me some fun games in the past. And now looking at the keywords, so very similar to a lot of the heroes we're going to get here, but I'll just run through them. Death, Malignant, Night Haunt, Hero, and Tomb Banshee. So the important things here to remember is the Night Haunt and the Hero. Obviously the Hero for the um, Deathless save you'll get for the rest of the units and the um, Tomb Banshee herself. Right, okay. So then moving on to what's going to be our newer heroes of the army. And we're going to start here with the Lord Executioner. So of course he's a leader. And like the Tomb Banshee, it's only going to cost you 80 points as well, so pretty cheap there. And because of that, it's going to be another little hero for your army. And that is going to be almost a common theme here we're going to see for the Nighthorn army. They have a few big heroes, but they don't have anything massive. They don't have, you know, your Vampire Lord and Zombie Dragon, your Nagash, your um, Alarial, something like that. They mainly consist of lots of smaller heroes that um, give support to your army. And if they don't give support, do you think they make up for their points in other means? Right, so talking about the law of the Executioner, it's essentially, um, of course, he was generally an executioner in life, but also like a murderer, something like that, um, just enjoyed killing like the Calm Wraith. Um, however, their role in um you know undeath it's not so much as you know mindless as the calm if he just wants to go around and kill as many people as possible the lord executioner has got a purpose um more than just inflicting pain on the enemy his purpose is to capture the souls that have tried to escape from um Shaish. and obviously when we mean Shaish, we mean uh the claws and the gash who you know rightfully owns these souls he is sent out to try and claim them back from the gash that is his job um, and then he is surrounded by the souls that have tried to escape from the gash. They may never leave the Lord Executioner's presence and the Lord Executioner weaponizes them against the enemy to increase how much fear he imposes on them. Right then, and seeing what his stats are like, and like I said, he only costs you 80 points, so they're quite a nice thing we've got about this guy and the previous heroes who look like, is that we're not expecting too much. So if there's anything good in there, you know, it's a bonus. It's a really cheap hero, so crack on right okay so it's moving at six inches he's got a four plus save ten bravery and five wounds he's got the decapitating great axe as his only weapon and it's a meter weapon it's got a one inch range it's got three attacks it's a free to hit a free to wound minus two rend one damage so i really like um the uh, stats you know he's got five wounds so he's a bit more beefier than the last two heroes we saw who only had four this guy's got five um he's got three attacks with his weapons that's great uh, free to hit, that's great. Free to wound, fantastic. And minus to rend, yep, we love that. And then one damage, which I am disappointed at because this guy is meant to be, you know, the Lord Executioner. He's not just your standard Executioner, of course, which we all know is what those are. He is your Lord Executioner. So you expect him, you know, to be a little bit more like two damage. You know, come on, give me that two damage, especially how the Karma if gets two damage. So a little bit disappointed there. However, it is sort of made a bit better in the rules and like i said this guy only costs 80 points so you can't really complain right and then going into his abilities he's got the beheading strike so if the unmodified wound roll for an attack made with the captain strike is a six add two to the damage characteristic of that weapon for that attack so 
yeah, that would make it, you know, free attacks with free to hit, free to win monster rend, free damage. It goes from being a bit meh to a bit like, oh my god, that's really good. Um, however, you need to get a 6 to, um, you know, wound, which, you know, you might do. You're making free attacks, so you're not making, like, one attack or something, so you might get that. Um, you will get that at some point, of course, you know, it all depends on luck. But I think what I would personally prefer is a um, different um, ability. What would be, as this guy sounds like he's going to be going against heroes, is that he only has one damage attack. What would be just a, you know, a flat one damage. Um, however, if you went against heroes, his damage would be a free. Now, I know that's a that's a different trade-off, and I don't know that would make it too good or whatever, but I think that would be pretty cool if it, uh, you know, it's either one damage or it's a free damage if it goes against, you know, let's say a hero and maybe a monster as well. I just think that would make him a bit more purposeful, a bit more try and send him against certain enemy units. You know, he's got a place in the army that way rather than just going, he's all right, but he could be really good or he can be a bit, like I say, all right or a bit, no. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you know, if he's not getting those sixes to wound at the moment, the only really good thing about him is the minus two rend, but, you know, he only costs you 80 points. And, you know, for most armies, you know, this is pretty good so far um, for what you're getting. I mean, don't look at it as compared to what you get in Stormcast Army because the cost of their heroes really annoys me because some of them are just ridiculously cheap. Um, but anyway, going on to his other abilities, he's got the ethereal one, so we talked about why that's great. And then he's got his next ability, which is staring death in the face. So at the start of the combat phase, you can pick an enemy hero within three inches of this model. Subtract one from the hit rolls for attacks made by that hero in that combat phase. So um, that's pretty good. It's given him a bit more of a purpose now. So it's not just going in there and hoping to get sixes to wound, otherwise not doing anything. He is making the enemy hero minus one to hit. And of course, you know, it's situational what you put it up against but you know if you put it up against a monster or something like that you are making a big difference there um you know because i mean okay let's put it in the perfect game scenario where you're up against the gash and you've got this guy next to him and he's made the gash minus one to hit that would be fantastic we're doing it to our on but you know those situations don't happen all the time but even just making um you know a vampire lord zombie dragon minus one to hit is huge because now it's like more attack is now hit on a five instead of a four which, you know, sounds like it's a lot worse than characteristic anyway, and then, you know, obviously mathematically it is. Um, so, yes, I do like that ability. It's given him more of a purpose. Of course, though, he has to survive being within three inches of that enemy hero to make that enemy hero minus one to hit. But that's why you charge this guy in with a other big heavy unit. So, um, obviously, a heavy unit would be, you know, attacking um, the big nasty monster first, the big nasty hero first. Um, and then this guy would be, you know, just in the end, just going, you don't want to attack me because I don't really mean that much to you. You want to attack this big unit that's being basically the problem to you, but I will make you minus one to hit just because. So that's his place. You know, he's a harassing unit. That's where I think he fits in. Okay, and then moving on to his last ability, which is Disembodied Skulls. Um, roll a d6 each time you allocate a mortal wound to this model. On a 5+, plus, the wound is negated. Yeah, so that's cool. So he gets a 5 plus death save essentially. And then he also gets his normal death save on top of that. So yeah, I do like that. It makes him a bit more survivable. You know, exactly how he's making the enemy minus one to hit if it's an enemy hero and he gets an extra death save. Um, but there's someone on a 5 plus. Yeah, I think that's good. So looking at his keywords, he is death, malignant, night haunt, hero, and lord executioner. So the same as we've seen before, apart from obviously lord executioner bit. Good that he's a hero, and that's going to be the same for all of these guys. So he's given that death save. Um, and like I said, for 80 points, um, I think the first half of this war score I've read, I'm not a huge fan of because, like I say, the damage output is very, very swingy with that ability. Um, but I think the second part we're looking at, like this guy, survivable. Um, very survivable because obviously that teamed with um, his ethereal is good. But I think why you take this guy is to make the enemy hero minus one to hit, which is why I think, unless you've got 80 points left over and you don't want to take a two match or a car with, or anything else, I think, I don't know, unless you know the sort of list you're going up against, you're not playing a tournament, you're not playing a random player, you know what you're fighting, and you know they've got a big nasty um, hero mounted on a monster or a big nasty, uh, you know, a monster hero. Um, if you know you're going against that, yeah, bring this guy along, you know, he'll make the enemy monster hit, but if you're not, 
I don't really know where this guy fits in too much. I think he's a cool model. I think he's awesome, but I'm not really too sure where his place is. And I know I did um, say earlier on the video that I think most of the heroes in this army have got a place, but if I'm honest now, I'm not entirely convinced on each one of them, and that is the Lord Executioner. But if you've got the Soul Wars box, you get one in there. Like I say, it's a great model, so it's worth trying um, several things with him to see if there's um, different things you can do and see how he gets on that way and see where he fits in the army. Um, but like I say, in that case, he's only 8 points, so it's not hard um, just trying out, seeing how he does. Right, okay, so that's the old Executioner. Now, moving on to a bit of a bigger model, but um, not bigger in the sense of wounds, we have got the Dreadblade Harrow. So first, the Dreadblade Harrow, um, I absolutely love the model. Um, I was really surprised how cheap the kit is. I know I think it's an easy-to-build kit, and I believe in the UK anyway, it's £15 for two models which I thought was fantastic. I thought, to be honest, when this um, model, you know, when they showed it off, and they showcased it, um, before they announced it, it was a hero, I thought, oh, it's going to be um, an elite cavalry choice, you know, like the, uh, sort of, you know, like your Gore Grunters, or even maybe something I was sort of hoping for, something like Varangar level, or Draconian Guard, where you get two of these in a box for, I don't know, even like 30 quid, which is expensive, but, you know, 30 quid for two of these guys, and they're awesome in the game. Um, you know, in a unit, that would be really cool. You know, to see elite, um, you know, cavalry choice for death um, come back again, you know, apart from Blood Knights, because, you know, if you've already got a unit of them, chances are you've already sold um, one of your kidneys to get that unit, so you don't really want to sell the other because, you know, you've got to live at the same time. So, unfortunately, that does get in the way of things. So, I thought, right, great, we've got a new big, nasty cavalry unit for death coming out. This time it's plastic, new models, new sculpts great let's give it a go however they went a different approach and they turned it into a hero which i was a little bit a bit disappointed of if i'm completely honest with you um just because i thought it was a good opportunity here to make your um you know like i said this big elite cavalry unit for death again you know the new sort of as someone um described to me in my i think my nighthorn um you know reveal trailer i did you know for when Game Show Workshop, uh, Reveal the Nighthorn, when I just talked through the trailer, um, which was one of the most popular videos. I think I had someone do a comment on there. Afraid I can't remember the name, but that comment was saying, maybe these guys are, you know, um, the ghost of vampires, the spirit of vampires. I thought, yeah, that sounds fantastic. And then when I zoomed in on the model's face, I was like, yeah, it's got fangs as well, so it would really make sense. You know, like, oh my god, these are, you know, like, the ghost of blood knights sort of thing, where, you know, once they've you know, like these vampires have been properly destroyed. The gashes reharvest their souls. You know, maybe they're from the old world or something like that. The world that was, that would be awesome. Um, however, that was not to be. And instead, what they are is a cheap hero. So they're only costing you 100 points for one. Um, but yeah, they're just a bit unusual to me because you buy, you get two in a box as well. So you don't even buy one, you know, on its own. You know, you're sort of means that you want two of these guys which i'm not really too sure if you do and um you've got you know the knight of shrouds on his um skeletal steed so you know i sort of feel like if you wanted your sort of like um ghost on a on a horse you've got one already in that um and if you want this something a bit bigger you've got your ghost and an under pegasus so you've got that as well um so yeah i was a little bit shamed that these guys aren't um actually a unit themselves but that's enough moaning about my thoughts of them let's get on to what they actually are and we'll start with the law and this basically tells us that they are lieutenants um to um, nighthorn leaders such as the night shroud essentially your generals of your nighthorn armies so that's what they are what they were in life where they were again like lieutenants that sort of thing and then what nagash has done is um when they're deaf obviously he's you know keep their status as that sort of rank but he's also made these guys um, quite good at working at their own. Because see how they betray on the battlefield as they can like fade in and out of um, uh, the realm of the living and you know the realm of uh, death and you know basically fade in and out of reality. So it allows them to teleport around the battlefield, you know, get behind enemy walls uh, but quicker than the rest of the Nighthorn to prepare uh, for the uh, big assault on you know fortresses and stuff like that. So they are sort of um, a very tactical. Um, tool what Nagash has in his belt within his Nighthorn army. That's how I describe them anyway. And then going into their rules, they've got a 12 inch movement, so that is obviously huge. Um, that plus with the fly, um, 
you know ability they've got basically is just going to put them on the same level as your um, you know hex race at that point and i've talked about that in that video why that makes them so good with that movement 12 inch movement flying is great um so yeah like that four plus save standard 10 bravery fine five wounds um i mean these guys are only costing you 100 points so there's that but five wounds you know this guy's on a horse and the lord executioner wasn't give him an extra wound you know i don't know what lord executioner you know has got what his, his mass is bigger than the um dreadblade harrow but yeah i mean five wounds fine i would have just like six just to make it it just would have felt more right i think and then going on to its melee weapon so it's got the uh, dreadblade it's a one inch range it's a free attacks it's got freeze to hit freeze to wound minus one rend and one damage and then its next attack is a ghostly hooves and teeth so it's got a one inch range two attacks force to hit fight to wound no rend and one damage so um you know the ghost attacks don't seem that good you know from the um his ghostly mount the scales of steed however i think we all know that the horses in Warhammer somehow always do more damage than the rider. So two attacks on the horses there, that's not too bad. And um, when I call it the Skeletal Steed, I mean the Afuel Steed. The Skeletal Steed is just what they have for um, Death Rattle for the White King. Anyway, going on to his uh, more important weapon, the uh, Dreadblade. I think that's a bit, you know, not too great. You know, it's only, um, it's great there's three attacks, but similar situation with the Lord Executioner, apart from it's only got a minus one rend and one damage as well. A little bit disappointing but it gets a bit better in the ability so we're going to go into the abilities now so um, like i say it's got the mount it can fly it's got the um, a feel ability and going into its more um you know purpose ones to that own model we've got the um phantasmal discord operation and um uh, forgive me if that's not pronounced correctly i've never read those words before so bear with me here um if this model is more than three inches away from any enemy models at the start of your movement phase instead of making a normal move you can remove it from the battlefield and set it up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches away from the enemy so this is what i was talking about how they sort of like you know fade in that reality um uh, which i think is great um you know they come in and out of a sort of special mist that's how they do it and um yeah i think this is great because this means they can just teleport on those um enemy objectives what you know maybe the enemy has captured and then moved on from on their back lines and in the you know late um you know end of the game you can just quickly teleport on them before the enemy can react to it you know haven't got time to deal with it and you've just taken that objective from them which could be huge and could make you win that game so i think it's great they've got that ability it's going to be one of those abilities that's um really adds to um you know your tactical options with the night horn of course you've got their sort of you know some from the underworld ability that allows you to do that but this guy could do it at the end of you know like on the fifth turn or something where you really need it which you can't do with from the underworlds they come ability so yes i think that's great it really adds um really um important you know tools essentially to your army to deal with problems which could make you win those games especially in you know competitive games right okay going on to the next ability the dread blade so add one to the damage characteristic of this model's dread blade if it made a charge move this turn or add one to the attack characteristic of this model's dread blade if it did not make a charge move in the same turn so that's nice so you know add one to the damage characteristic that's great you've got three attacks three to hit three to wound minus one red um, two damage that's really nice that i really like it especially how fast this guy is it's probably going to be able to get into charge you move him up with your um, hex race as well um this guy's just going to tag on just on the side of the unit just so the enemy can't do much damage to him but he can do quite a lot of damage to the enemy you know it's got potential of doing free damage to the enemy uh pretty similar to the calm wraith there um which is really cool and then the nice thing about it is that what makes him a little bit i wouldn't say tanky but a little bit more um survive melee i suppose you'd call it um it's that you know if he's already charged um and it's you know moved on to the next turn don't worry you're still going to get an ability you're going to get an extra attack so not as good as the extra damage but you're getting something it's not just like uh, the shock cavalry of just charging him bam that's when you're doing all your damage and then that's it you're still going to get ability uh for the prolonged combat to come so that's pretty nice there and then his last ability which is curse of loyalty reroll wound rolls are one for attacks made with this model's dread blade whilst it's within nine inches of a friendly knight of shroud so um obviously that's going to depend if you want to take a knight of shrouds um so yeah they can be quite good we'll look into their wash ground a bit so yeah if you plan on taking knight of shrouds um 
you know, taking this guy isn't too bad because, you know, on that charge, if he's within nine inches of the night shrouds, he is, you know, he will have an attack that is three attacks, um, freeze to hit, freeze the wound to re rolling once the wound, minus one rend and two damage. That's pretty good, but I probably wouldn't try and build it around um, this guy just to make him as good as he can because he is only, you know, again, a little hero. You don't want to try and make him into a combat monster because you're not really going to achieve that. But if you can do that anyway, just as, you know, like a. Um, just like a bonus then crack on so looking at his last things to talk about so his keywords he's got death malignant night one hero and dread blade harrow so obviously the most important thing there is hero um so he gives this you know death save about and what i will say about this guy is i think he's good for that teleporting ability um really be able to you know snatch those enemy objectives on like the last turn of the game maybe could be um really really key here especially how this is still quite a new army. I mean, yes, it's been played a lot and it's been replicated a lot and people are starting to learn how it all works, but some people still don't know, you know, how this army really plays, and in particular certain war scrolls. So they might go the Dreadblade, um, you know, you, you tell your opponent, you know, what you've got on your army, blah, blah, you've got, I've got a Dreadblade, I've got some Spirit Host, etc. And, you know, the enemy goes, oh, okay, yeah. But they might not know about the um, Phantasmal, um, this corporation, um, like I said, that is pronounced correctly, um, ability which allows you to do that teleporting which if they don't know about it they're probably gonna leave their objectives for the taking maybe so you know it'll be you know of course in that situation is one trick pony but if you're playing different opponents you can make the most use of it as possible and like I said I do love these models um, for this army like I said, there's not a lot of models in this army I don't really like to be honest um, but the Dreadblade Harrows uh, yeah I think they're great and they're really really cheap um, like I said they're a little hero but also um, you know just in real money 15 quid for two um, models of these I believe it is um, it'd be hard to justify not buying it in all honesty I think right now we move on to the spirit torment who is going to cost you a hundred and twenty points so you know we're getting up now in points you know 120 points isn't loads but it's more than the ones we've looked at so far and who are they in the law so essentially they are Nagash's jailers um, they were, you know, from what I can gather, jailers in life, but instead of locking up, um, you know, um, humans anymore, you know, bodies essentially, um, for the crimes they've committed, now they seek up souls um, off those who have tried to escape um, Nagash's, you know, uh, rightful uh, claim over them. And what the uh, Spirit Torment is job to do is to go out there and claim those souls back and lock their souls away for eternity in the gaseous servitude so that's where they are in the law now let's see what they're like in the game so we've got a six inch movement so yeah pretty good four plus save yep good ten bravery five wounds so yeah not overall bad i mean it's good to see that they've got five wounds because of course they're you know like a unmounted hero so that's good there um yeah i'm pretty standard all around compared to the ones we've seen so far right okay and then looking at their amino weapons they've got one which is the Shackle Geist Chains, which is a 2 inch range. It's got 3 attacks, it's a 4 to hit, a 3 to wound, a minus 2 rend, and 3 damage. So, not bad there at all, really. I am quite like that, to be honest, because, you know, like a 4 plus to hit, you know, it's not bad. 3 plus to wound, very good. Minus 2 rend, great. D3 damage can be swingy, but that's certainly better than 1 damage. And 3 attacks, and a 2 inch range on that, again, so... Yeah, I'd take that. I'm pretty happy with that so far. But this guy is costing you 120 points. So quite a bit more than the other heroes. You know, even twice as expensive as the car race. You have two car race for this guy. But that's where this his abilities come in. Because this guy is a lot more supportive. Right, okay. Going to his ability so he can fly. And he's a feel great. Um, he's got Nagash's bidding ability. Which is you can reroll hit rolls of one for friendly night haunt units while they are wholly within 12 inches of any spirit torments. So again, we saw this with the chain guys. We saw the sort of link there um, between the two and why it was so good. And um, again, yes, this is good. However, like a lot of the new war scrolls, the ability is wholly within and it is only 12 inches. So you're probably only gonna get two maybe um, free if you've got a hero there, you know, units within range of this at the most, you know, like if they're bigger units as well, and probably more likely it's only going to be one, uh, not including himself um, at that moment. So, yeah, 
I mean, not bad situational though. Obviously, you know, you got to make sure everything's you know measured within range. But if you can do that, and it's like I said, it's not going to be hard to get um, another unit within that range. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, especially like I've mentioned, if you put that on the um, blade gas remnants, you know, they're already hitting on a free. Um, so given the um, you know reroll and ones there is um, great, and you know these guys um, talking about the blade gas anyway. They get to reroll all failed hit rolls, so you know that's hitting on a free reroll all failed. So that's where good synergy can be there. You know, if you've got a, you know, because the range restrictions and you know you've got big size units, you can only pick one of your units. Pick the blade gas remnant, and it will pay off really nicely with them. Um, but again, also you know this is good. You know, it helps with your, you know, with even your bigger heroes. You know, they're going to get bonuses here. You know, your um, Mongol, your black coach. You know, all sorts of different things. So yes, that is a good ability to have there. Right, and then moving on to his next one, which is Captured Soul Energy. So at the start of the Bastrock phase, if three or more enemy models were slain that turn, pick a friendly Nighthorn unit within six inches of this model and heal D3 wounds that have been allocated to that unit. If three or more enemy Stormcast models were slain that turn, heal three wounds instead of D3. So this is good. Something to bear in mind here is that... It's only got a six inch range and I know I've already talked about it but I think that's something you've got to bear in mind so you want to keep this guy close to your units you know within 12 inches wholly within 12 inches to get that re-rolls of ones to hit but I think you know also bear in mind that you want to keep them you know twice as close to allow for this healing ability to happen because let's face it the damage in a you know turn happens after the movement phase so you might be in a situation like, oh, I didn't expect my unit over here, you know, your hero, your monster, or whatever, your, your infantry unit, whatever the situation is, you didn't expect them to take damage. And you think, oh, I've got to make sure this guy can heal them. If he's not within that six inch range, you're obviously not going to heal them. So it's something you've got to plan ahead a bit. So you think, right, I'm charging this in. I know that's going to take damage because I'll be attacking with this other unit first and the enemy will be able to attack this other unit before they can attack so they are going to take some damage you know maybe have the spirit torment behind them to really to um, bring them back because um the other parts of this ability what link into this is the stormcast eternal uh, models that were slain and um, that term if they were you know the three ones that are slain from battle shock which means you can heal three wounds uh, d3 wounds which i think is absolutely fantastic just because anything that um benefits you from you know stormcast eternal stein is really really great in my opinion because they are uh, traitorous a bastard and in all honesty it's times like that what make whatever is left of my heart within my ribcage smile so that is lovely there and then the good part of the um, ability that is uh, really sort of just defines um, how useful it is is that alternatively instead of healing the unit you picked if models from that unit have been slain you can return them to the unit draw a d3 you can return any slain models to the unit that have a combined wound characteristic of less or equal to the number you rolled. So this means that it's not just going to be used on your multi-wound models by healing them, it's also used on your you know, one wound infantry models, which is the main part of this army. Realistically, they're going to be most bodies on the field. So that is great there, rather than it just being for you know healing your heroes or whatever. So that is good to have part of this ability attached onto, because I know like you might have already fought it, because you know the grave sites do that, and so they're like, a lot of the um, other spells which you know Nighthawk and Death have and so on lots of abilities um, but something to mention here is that it is important because without it written there it could be argued that it didn't give that ability so it's good that it's all written down for us in stone and then it says if your army includes more than a one spirit torment um, at least three enemy models must be slain and during the turn for each spirit torment that uses ability and no spirit torment can use this ability more than once in the same battle shock phase. So that reads a little bit confusing to me. I think that what that means is that you can only use this um, captured soul energy once for each, um, you know, spirit torment you've got. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it means. If you let me know what you think it means down below, because it probably is just really um, clear English here, how it says and how it describes the ability, but. I'm a little bit tired, so if I have got it wrong, please let me know down in the comments. Which, um, if that is the case, um, yeah, I mean, you're probably only going to be taking one of these guys anyway, unless you're running a certain list, so I don't see that being too much of a problem. Uh, of course, it would be nice if you could do it for all your spirit tournaments, but uh, there we go. So, the 
next thing to say is really just the keyword so he's death malignant night haunt hero and spirit torment so obviously the most important thing there is hero so he gets his death save right so that's the spirit torment there like i said 120 points um his attacks are better than you know some of the heroes we've already looked through but he really adds synergy to the army and that is really important and supportive so i'd say that this guy is definitely worth um if you're new you know to night haunt definitely worth checking out and putting one in your army see how it does and if you're already, you know, a heavily experienced, uh, you know, Nighthorn player, I think this guy is still useful for you. And if you could let me know your thoughts down below, that would be great. Right, now we move on to our wizard in our Nighthorn army. And this will be the Guardian of Souls. Now, this guy is going to set you back 140 points. However, like I said, he is, you know, your first wizard we're talking about in the army. So you expect him to cost a bit more. Now, who exactly is the Guardian of Souls? He keeps a vigil over the dead whilst driving those around him to the height of malice. When one of these sorceress spectres goes to war, hundreds of the living dead are drawn to their lantern's flame from leagues around. So, you know, he really is, you know, almost a bannerman for the army. You know, his, you know, as it, I've just said, his um, torch is really, you know, like a signal fire to say that, you know, the time has come to rise from your tombs. All that sort of thing we're going to take your revenge out of the living so he's quite cool there you know he's quite a key figure within the army you can see that aesthetically and um you know thematically as well right and then going into his rules his stats six inch movement four plus save ten bravery five wounds so very standard compared to what we've seen before but you know standard not imperfectly in a good way looking at his melee weapon so he's got the option of two so he can either take the chill blade or the maul of judgment so the chill blade first He's got range one, he's got three attacks, freeze to hit, freeze to wound, mass one rend, and one damage. Not too bad, you know, it's a wizard attack, so it's a little bit different from a normal um, wizard attack. You know, I guess that's because it's a blade and not the actual staff, so fair enough. And then the Maul of Judgment, so one inch range, two attacks, freeze to hit, freeze to wound, no rend, two damage. So comparing these two, uh, a little bit interesting, I say the Chill Blade is more reliable. It's going to, you know, on average, it's going to get you more damage through to the enemy. You know, of course, you know, it's making, um, you know, extra attack as well. And um, it's got a minus one rend. However, you know, so at the most that can do three damage. But the Maul Judgment at most can do four damage. But it hasn't got any rend. So the way up there. But I would go for the uh, Maul Judgment. And obviously these kits come with certain um, models. You know, the, there's two models for the guardian of souls you're going to have the one with the sword is going to be the one you're going to get in the souls box so that's going to be the most popular one you're going to see just because that's how the easiest way to get it because the other one is what i believe is a store um birthday um you know garden of souls so what that means it's only going to become available to you through your um you know games workshop store when it is its birthday which is a little bit of a pain in the ass because they announced that model about three months after my store birthday so it's quite a long wait to get that model however if you're really that desperate just go to another store or go on ebay or something and be able to get it that way so yeah the mall of judgment is the one i'd rather go for i mean statistically i don't know if it's better but i do just prefer the chance of doing two damage just because when you do um you know when your enemy fails his saves and they go how much damage is that and you go two it's just such a nice feeling and that's why i would like to have it right okay so uh, Talk about his melee weapons there, that's obviously not what this guy's going to be known for. He's going to be known for his abilities, so let's get on with those. So he can fly, and he's a field, so that's great, as I mentioned before. Um, he can add one to wound rolls for attacks made with melee weapons used by friendly night haunt units that are wholly within 12 inches of this model. So again, similar to what we saw with the Spirit Torment with his, um, you know, uh, Nagash's bidding ability, because you have to be wholly within 12 inches. But adding one to wound rolls, that is pretty damn good because, like we said already, some of the units here have got a really good um, to hit into wound characteristics. You know, a lot of the wounding in the Nighthorn army is wounding on a free. So if it's wounded on a, um, you know, free, you add in one to it, so wound on a two. Um, yeah, that's pretty damn good. So this guy I'm already seeing as I want to have in my army, especially how you can, um, you know, even if you want to target him around just one of your bigger Nighthorn units just to go, you know, he's not going to benefit anything else because the other things need to be within 12 inches of him wholly. I'm just going to make sure that this nice big unit is wholly within 12 inches of him the whole game and that's going to be his job, just buffing that unit. So yeah, that's great. I do like that. 
and um, even when you just make sure you know there's one of the heroes whatever within uh, range of him to get that add one to wound now something that is important here is if you're thinking oh I'm going to time with the Lord Executioner to get his beheading strike off on a 5 instead of a 6 would make his damage uh, free the um, beheading strike is on a unmodified uh, wound roll of a 6 so unfortunately you're not going to get that through. It's always going to be on a 6. Um, it's, you can't make it a 5. But on the plus side, like I said, I think it's called the Balefire Lantern from the Legion of the Gash, um, Grand Host and the Gash artifacts that make enemy units minus 1 to wound. So, you know, it's a trade off there. Right, so then we go on to its magic. So it says, you know, this model is a wizard. It can attempt to cast one spell in your hero phase and attempt to unbind one spell in the enemy hero phase. It knows the Arcane Bolt, Mystic Shield, and Special Lore spell. So we know what Arcane Bolt and Mystic Shield are already. So we're going to talk about Special Lure. So Special Lure um, has a casting value of 6. If successfully cast, pick a friendly Sumble Night Haunt unit wholly within 24 inches of the caster. You can either heal D6 wounds that unit has been allocated to, or if no wounds have been allocated to the unit, you can return a number of slain models to that unit that have a combined wound characteristic two or less than the roll of a d6 so i think this is a great spell you know healing d6 wounds is massive um you know it's i don't know if i go as far to call it game changing but i suppose in some games it can be it can really help you turn the tide of you know like just a turn and by doing that it really heavily impacts on the game healing d6 wounds not d3 but d6 is fantastic of course there's a lot of stormcast things that can do that but, um, you know, we're not going to talk about that because it's a silly army and I complain about it too much. So for the Nighthorn, I really like that. And then it's also got the um, tie in there, similar to, you know, the Spirit Torment had, you know, a similar thing. That, you know, don't worry if you haven't got um, a, you know, a big model in your army, essentially, that's taking a lot of damage. You can heal one of your uh, units back up, you know, trying to get them back to full strength, which is great. Especially when we talked about how elite some of these units are. And they're only one wound, a lot of the uh, units in the Nighthorn, as we mentioned in that video. So... That is really, really nice though. I like it. And the range on it, um, 24 inches is great. It is wholly within 24 inches though, so that's something to bear in mind. So at first it does seem great, to be fair. That's what I thought. And then thinking about it, yeah, I mean, just bear in mind um, this guy, you know, keep in mind that it's wholly within 24 inches as, you know, that will obviously be a problem for you if you do forget about it. And from what I can see of this guy, you want to have it not essentially on the front line um, because, you know, he's... You know, he's a feel, he's got four up save, so he's not too bad, but he's not going to survive loads of combat. So you want to have him behind your front line. You don't want to have him at the back of the board. You want to have him behind your front line to make sure that he's in range to give all these benefits off to the rest of your army. So that's the Guardian Souls, 140 points. I like him. I think he adds quite a lot to your army. And looking at his keywords, he's got Death, Malignant, Nighthorn, Hero, Wizard, and Guardian Souls. So the uh, three most important ones here this time is obviously Nighthorn, then here for the death save and so on and then also being wizard is um a very important in nighthorn army as you well to be fair you have i think three wizards now you didn't use to though you only used to have um a zero so it's nice that we've got a other wizard there for certain and he's definitely going to be a keeper for the um army i believe right okay and then we move on to a hero with a bit more status now the nighthorn army so we looked at all the support ones but who, you know, leads these Nighthorn armies? So, of course, this is going to be talking about the Knight of Shrouds, who is a master technician and commands and inspires nearby spirits to greater heights of malice and fury. A deadly bladesman and the knight wields a sword of stolen hours, an enchanted weapon that increases his own power with each kill. So, you know, he's essentially your general of your typical Nighthorn army. Um, in the lore, anyway, we'll see if he is in the game in a moment. Right, so he's got a 6 inch movement, he's got a 4 plus save and 10 bravery, and he's got 5 wounds. So, yeah, pretty standard, uh, you know, it's exactly like the last one we saw in all fairness. And, you know, it's not too bad, I mean, this guy isn't going to cost you too much, he's 120 points, so not too bad stats there. But it is the same stats as we saw the Lord Executioner, who only cost 80 points, so let's see what else he's doing here. So. His sword of stolen hours, so it's one inch range, it's got four attacks, hits on a three, wounds on a three, minus one rend, two damage. Yeah, not too bad there, pretty nice. Um, can't really complain too much. Two damage is, well, obviously it's key here. Minus two rend would be nice, but, you know, fair enough, not too bad there. Right, okay, and then looking into his ability, so he can fly in his ethereal, 
uh, stolen hours. So each time a wound inflicted by this model sword of stolen hours slays an enemy hero, heal one wound allocated to this model. Um, not bad. I mean, obviously, you can't say no to this ability, you know, because it does benefit you, you know, on the off chance you get off. But I think it would have been nice if it was just every time you inflict a wound on a enemy hero, you heal a wound. You know, a nice treat there. Um, rather than it being like, well, this wound then has to kill the enemy hero and you know by no means this guy isn't bad because i suppose at most he's got four attacks to do two damage so you could do eight damage this guy but you're probably not really gonna do that especially against most heroes so um yeah it's it's one of those abilities that when it happens it'll be really cool and great but don't rely on it too much i would say right okay and then moving on to his next ability which is his command ability so first command ability we're reading for this nighthorn army and this command ability is spectral overseer so you can use this command ability at the start of your combat phase if you do so pick a friendly model with this command ability and add one to hit rolls for friendly nighthorn units while they are wholly within 12 inches of that model in the combat phase okay so unless i'm wrong here i think that's just a really long worded way of saying um you can add one to uh, hit rolls for friendly Nighthorn units that are wholly within uh, this model. You know, I think that's a long way of wording that. But anyway, going into what that ability does, um, it used to be really good when the Nighthorn, um, you know, the Night of Shrouds first came out because back then your spirit host was still um, doing mortal wounds on a six plus to hit, which meant, right, that's great. So that's, you know, like um, you can, you know, basically add to that. So you'd have this guy and surrounded by spirit hosts and then they'll be doing mortal wins on a five and then they'll sacrifice to what was damn scenery back then which would make them um, then be doing mortal wins on fours and they've got you know like 18 attacks for every three models and it'd be fantastic to do horrendous things however now it's changed to an unmodified hit roll for six i'm not saying that's bad because as i have mentioned when i talked about the spirit host there's plenty of things now that can make you minus the hit so it's for the best however it does make this guy's command ability not as good and wholly within 12 inches I mean, yeah, that's pretty short again. There's a lot of this hold within 12 inches, which is a bit of a pain. Um, that's what I feel anyway. But if you really want to make this, you know, target one of your units, um, you know, like even the Blade Guy Revenants again, because they could be, um, at that point, they're hitting on twos, re-roll and failed hit rolls. And if you have the, you know, Garden Souls nearby them, then they're, like I say, hitting on twos, re-rolling ones, and then wounding on twos with their attacks which is not bad at all especially how you know even if the um knife shrouds wasn't there there would be re-roll and failed hit rolls for the blade Ghost revenants but going back to this command ability yeah i think it's all right um i don't think it's bad but uh, i just i don't see why you'd make this guy a general and obviously you don't have to do that now with command abilities but like i say this guy is meant to be leading your armies i just feel like he doesn't really fit in too much and that's just my personal opinion so if you disagree with me let me know down in the comments please um to see like actually no um basically saying that i'm wrong there's actually a good way to use this guy in certain lists and all that that's fantastic um great to hear that i just feel like he's i think for you know how many points he's costing which you know isn't too many points i suppose i mean it's only 120 but i think i would rather just have my um you know, one of the other heroes we looked at, such as, you know, the Spirit Torment, as an example. I think it adds a lot more to your army. Right, okay, and then going to the keywords, he's got Death Malignant, Nighthaunt, Hero, and Knight of Shrouds. So, of course, the most important ones there are Nighthaunt and Hero, and importantly, Nighthaunt um, obviously gets the army, but then Hero um, to get that death save. So, then we move on to a similar named um, hero, but of course, it's a little bit different. And this is the Knight of Shrouds. But on an inferior steed so of course a little bit different and to replicate that instead of costing 120 points his guy is going to cost 140 points so 140 points which is the same point cost as the guardian of soul so begin in that price bracket now so let's see what he's like in the law before we go into the rules so on the obliquest nights of the human soul the knight of shrouds ride the head of a massed gathering of undead their disembodied voices ring out over the moans of the deceased, even as they steal the lives from their foes. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, they're sort of like they're 
they are, you know, they're, again, there they are, the general, like the normal Knight of Shrouds we looked at, but they are more for a mounted force, and basically describing that these guys aren't hiding at the back, they're charging straight into the enemy, which is pretty cool. Right, they're looking at their rules, so 12 inch movement, so comparing them to the normal Knight of Shrouds, that's a double the movement, so, you know, that's already pretty good for the extra 20 points there. Um, a 4 plus save. 10 bravery and 6 wounds, so an extra wound you know, to replicate the uh, mount I suppose. It would be nice if it was an extra 2 wounds, but it's just 1, so not too bad stats already. Uh, the melee weapons, it gets 2, so it gets the Sword of Stolen Hours, which is 1 inch range, 4 attacks, 3 to hit, 3 to win, minus 1 rend, 2 damage, so exactly the same as the uh, Sword of Stolen Hours for the normal Night Shrouds. And then its next weapon is the Ghostly Hooves and Teeth attack, so it's got a 1 inch range, 2 attacks, 4 to hit, 5 to wound, uh, no rend and one damage. So yeah, it is. It wasn't a feel steed, so it's meant to be different, which makes it a little bit more annoying. But the thing, what I'm annoyed about this is, I would have liked it if the attack for the you know the feel steed was a to hit a four and to wound a four, just because you know I'm sh I'm sure it's a a better feel steed than what the rest of the mock of the night horn get to ride around on, because it's the one for the you know the bloody knight of shrouds. You know you expect it to be. It's got bloody horns on its head for God's sake. Why is that not part of its attack characteristic? Its horns are bigger than its teeth. Why is its horns not doing the damage and the teeth are? That's what really annoys me. It makes no sense. But anyway, um, that's why this annoys me. Its attacks. It should be a four to hit to replicate how big its fucking horns are. And the fact that it's got armor. You know, it's got an armor plate on the front of its head. Why is that not do damage? It's got spikes on it. But anyway, um, taking, you know, that little rant to the side. Those are its attacks. I'm sure the, uh, you know, the ghostly hooves and teeth will do damage anyway. Um, so and then going into its ability. So it uh, flies in the field. Great. Uh, stolen hours. Um, we've already looked at what that ability does with the um, previous night shrouds. But the only thing it does add is that saying that. You have to attack with the sword um, before the hooves when you do, you know, to try and get that healing off the wound. Um, which is basically just a way of them saying, like, just in case you thought you were going to use the hooves to try and make it easier for you to kill the hero to heal that wound, think again because I'm not giving you that one. So, yeah, a little bit annoying. But anyway, uh, moving on to its command ability, it's the Lord of Geist. So you can use this command ability at the start of the combat phase. If you do so, pick a friendly Nighthorn unit that's wholly within 18 inches off a friendly model with this command ability and add one to the attack characteristics of that model melee weapons in the combat phase a unit cannot benefit from this command ability more than once so again a very long winded way of saying that um, you know making it sound like uh, if it's within range of that unit with you know that model with that command ability blah blah just say that if it's within you know uh, 18 inches of the night shrouds on a field steed it gets um, this ability you know obviously you can only pick one unit um getting extra attack isn't bad especially how a lot of these um, units have got making a lot of attacks already so making them have an extra attack on top of it is good it's not bad um however though the bit that stings is that you can only use it um, once on a unit so you can't stack it on a unit which is a little bit annoying i think that's something they're going to be putting in more and more into the game to make sure that you can't keep them stacking these attacks because i've played against a corn uh, bloodbound army about a f few months ago probably about three months ago something like that and um, the guy had skull reapers and um, he used one of the command abilities to give him an extra attack however he saved his command ability his command points um, up like three points so he stacked that ability three times in the skull reapers so they made three extra attacks and oh my god I think I took on my unit of 12 cryptoris we have never been wiped out in one go before I think they took 78 damage and bear in mind I was making save rolls of that so it would have been even more if they failed all their saves. So maybe it's for the best that you can't stat this ability. Maybe for the sake of balance, it's good. Right, okay, and then looking at the keywords, it's Death Malignant, Night Haunt, Hero, and Night Shroud. So exactly the same as the last one. Again, what's important here is the hero for the uh, death save. Um, so thinking about this guy, I will say that I do really love the model, and it's one of the only Nighthawk models that I have actually got painted up, and I did in really, really, really enjoy painting him up, and uh, I love the scheme I did for him, so um, he was a great fun model to work on. So hobby side, fantastic. Um, in game, um, I don't think he's bad, I just think there's better options. I mean, what I was really hoping for when they sort of released this guy, you know, and the artwork and the pictures, you know, for all the sort of like Soul Wars hype. Um, they compared him next to the, I think it's the Lord Arcanum, isn't it, on the um, 
uh, like Griff Charger. Uh, they really sort of, you know, upped him up as like, you know, an anti-hero to him. So I was like, oh my god, this guy's going to be amazing. His mount is going to be like... I didn't expect loads of crazy good attacks from his mounts, but, you know, you know, maybe two attacks that, you know, hit on a four, wounded on a three, maybe, you know, one run, two damage. That would have been awesome. You know, like a, like a good sort of like horse mount for the uh, Nighthorn here. Or just death in general. Um, would have been really cool to see here, like a nice cool mount option. You know, would have been really awesome if they did that. Um, and, you know, I would not mind paying more points for it. I wouldn't mind, you know, paying 200 points for something like really awesome. Or maybe even like 220 points or something to make him as cool as like a um, uh, Lord Sersen on a Dracoff sort of, you know, that sort of power base, you know, we've got there. Because that is something we're missing in death. We basically go from a Viking, which we don't really take anymore because they're not really worth it. So we go from a, as a general... Yes, basically a you know a vampire lord to a vampire lord and zombie dragon to Nagash. Those are basically with some exceptions, those are basically the three steps you go, and each one of those has about you know three to four hundred points in difference. So it'd be nice to have something like in between the vampire lord and the um, vampire lord on zombie dragon. But unfortunately, they missed that opportunity with the night shrouds and. You know, they might not have missed an opportunity because it might just be me who feels like this and, you know, um, just being self-centered here. But I thought it would have been a really cool idea because what Death is definitely not short of, and particularly the Nighthorn, it's just cheap heroes that are sort of quite mediocre in their attacks and what they do. I mean, um, like I said, the Nighthorn is commander piece. I mean, it's all right. Um, the range on it is 18 inches, but if you take a Vampire Lord on just for on its horse, which is a, um, you know, a Nightmare, I believe it's Steed's called, um, it's command abilities, you know, pick a death unit within 15 inches, so again, you know, not 18 inches, but 15 inches, so that's something to bear in mind, but I don't think it has to be holding within, I think it's just 15 inches, so you know, if you think of it that way, it's bigger range, and it's got more versatile, so you can pick an ally unit you've got in your army, and yeah, like the Nighthawk one for the Nighthawk Shrouds, you can't stack it, of course, but it just <laughs> gives you more options, and the Vampire Lord on a, um, you know, Horse is basically exactly the same in attacks. Um, the only thing, instead of doing two damage, it does d3 damage. So maybe its attacks aren't as good because two damage is more liable. And you know, it hasn't got the feel keyword. And it's only got five wounds compared to six. And they both cost the same points. And it doesn't move 12 inches. It moves 10. But it has got a um, you know a blood chalice, so it can heal d6 wounds once per game. Um, it you know it's got. I just think it's got more to it to be honest. And it's got the uh, deathliest. Um, invocation um, ability, I believe it's called, you know, definitely invocation, um, which allows you to bring back some more models, which is more useful to this army than the Knight of Shrouds. So the Knight of Shrouds are meant to be leading the army, and actually, it turns out just a bloody vampire that has no relevance to the army is a better leader. But unfortunately, in a Nighthorn army, the vampire um, can't be the general because, um, you know, it's an ally. But not that you would want it to be the general anyway, because, you know, um, his command ability would be good, but you can use the command ability with command on points anyway. Um, but it, it just feels weird to me how a vampire is a <laughs> fits in more to this army than the Knight of Shroud. So, a little bit annoyed there. Of course, you guys can completely disagree with me because I haven't actually, you know, um, filled in a Knight of Shroud that much and all that sort of thing. So I haven't got loads of experience with it. Uh, so, you guys completely disagree with me. And if you do, please let me know down in the comments below because I'd really like to hear your thoughts on them and uh, basically, uh, you guys. Um, describing how um, my thoughts are wrong but I just feel like the Vampire Lord um, with his uh, Deathly Invocation um, ability it's just a lot more supportive to this army than the Knight of Shrouds and the Knight of Shrouds like I said they didn't get the option of just making him powerhouse by himself making him crazy with attacks so he's not really good in that way and um, I don't mean he's bad but I just mean the options you have in this army I think you've just got better things to spend your points on in all honesty and the command abilities are nice, don't get me wrong at all, um, but they're not outstanding. I mean, giving something an extra attack though, you know, that's not bad. And the other one, things within, you know, holding within 12 inches um, of the Knight of Shrouds on foot to get the, um, you know, um, add one to hit rolls isn't bad either. You know, they're not bad, they're not terrible by any, any means, but I just feel like there's better things to spend points on. So, um, yeah, the, and... But model-wise, I do really like him, and in particular the Knight of Shrouds on um, his Ethereal Steed. So, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to end the video there. I was at the start of this video planning to go into the main characters for the uh, Nighthorn and also go into the monsters for the Nighthorn um, and the um, 
you know the spells that Nighthorn get you know the you know realm spells whatever they're called uh, the malign point you know the models for the spells you know all those sort of nice big physical ones but I'm going to do that in a separate video just because um, it's already like soon going to be an hour and 10 minute video already so a 70 minute video already and we've just gone through the heroes and that's because there is quite a lot of um, heroes for the Nighthorn army you know it's almost like a Stormcast army to that point where there's loads of little ones uh, to go through so um, I am going to uh, not go into the other ones here if you would rather me um, for future references um, if I'm doing a big faction which you know like the um, Nighthorn are talk about all their sort of like hero war scrolls and stuff in one big video which would go on for nearly two hours if you would rather me do that please let me know down in the comments but I just feel like you guys are probably more like a um, hour or so long video rather than more like a two hour long video um, because that's well it's quite a lot to watch in one go unless you've got a lot of time to build and paint or got a long travel to work or however you guys watch these videos so if you let me know that's a bit of feedback so i know what to do for the future as there's going to be a lot of law and army videos to come it's oh my god there's gonna be so many i'm really excited for them It'd be awesome um but that's why i thought i'd end it uh, you know here talked about the um basic heroes and talked about probably what i'm going to do in the next video is go through the name characters and then the one after that I will go through the monsters so that will be the um, Mongol and then technically not a monster but it is a behemoth the uh, black coach and I will probably go through the um, spells for the night haunt in that video as well so it will be the name characters in part three and then part four will be the behemoths and spells I think that would be a good way to do it otherwise the videos will just get I just think too long if you guys disagree with me please let me know um, down in the comments because um, the reason I'll be doing this, you know, split up the videos up a bit more is for you guys. So if you guys would prefer me to do the long videos, let me know. But I think, you know, about an hour long videos, maybe just over, is a, a better number in all honesty. Right, okay guys. So um, that has been the video for the Heroes of the Night Haunt. So I think I've given quite um, an honest opinion here, um, you know, from obviously my opinion so you can disagree with it um, as much as you would like to that's absolutely fine um, but i think i've given quite an honest one i haven't just gone through them all and just said oh they're all amazing you know get every single one because they're gonna be fantastic i think i've told you my personal views on some of them why they're more better than others um and in particular you know the last time we looked at i think you know generally the models are fantastic you know looking but you know in the game there's just a few more questions to ask but if you do get the soul wars box that you know you are going to end up with the knight of shrouds on a field steed and quite a few heroes in that so it's a great chance to um, test those models out to see just how good they can be in different lists and so on but like i said guys i hope you've enjoyed this video it's been great fun uh, making it and really diving into the uh, hero war scrolls of the night haunt um, it's been great fun you know seeing all the um things they can do and get up to and if you guys could let me know um if you're new to Nighthorn, uh, what you like about the certain heroes and uh, what you look forward to um, seeing about them. And then also if you guys have got experience um, with Nighthorn, please let me know down in the comments below um, your thoughts and your opinions on the um, army and in particular their heroes. And yeah, so that's basically been it guys. So I'm really happy with how um, the Nighthorn series of videos is going. Um, like I said, I would have liked to get it all boxed off in a week, but clearly i've sort of um i've been like i've always mentioned i don't like bringing it up but you know i've been busy at work basically so that has affected that and also the night horn uh, faction is definitely a lot bigger than i originally thought i mean i knew how many units they had and stuff but i sort of underestimated how long it would take these videos so yeah that's why um it's taken a bit longer to do on um that front but um like i say guys i really thank you guys for watching this if you have enjoyed it please like subscribe and comment down below as i can't even describe to you how much that really helps me you know words can't describe it um that is why i make these videos um because you guys show me support which i am really really appreciative for and um thank you to um the guys who have been commenting on my night haunt videos it's really given me um inspired me and really sort of encouraged me to talk about certain things in the um series of the night video so that has been fantastic as well and i think guys i've been talking for long enough now so i'm gonna let you guys get cracking i thank you guys very much for watching this video i hope your hobby's going great and remember until next time nagash is all and all is one in nagash <laughs>